Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing something extra special because it's my husband's birthday. He's in the other room, so I don't want him to hear, but essentially I'm making him his favorite cake that we get every single year, and I'm going to try to do it from scratch this year and add in some extra things that he wishes the original cake would have. And I was actually able to get some ingredients that had the additional bits so that I don't have to, you know, put them on top. These are the star of the show. Can you believe it? Yeah, this is what he loves. He always talks about them, raves about them. He just thinks that they're like the best thing in the world. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you right now how to make this DIY Dairy Queen Oreo cake. Now, I just finished the ingredients and had put it all together, but the best thing about this toppings on top, and that's where all these cookie crumbs come in. And these are your embellishments of course you can put anything you want but I'm starting to do this at the beginning of the video which I never really finish a video with the end product more is more <laughs> I'm gonna be showing you today let's get right into the video so these are the ingredients you are going to need first off a pan of where you're going to be placing all of the ingredients in some hot fudge, Oreos, ice cream sandwiches, and chocolate ice cream. Although I got the new that already had the bits in it because that just saves me time of putting the extra bits into the ice cream. Plus, you can never have enough. <laughs> so I decided to get this. But regular chocolate ice cream would work as well. So the first thing to do is to put everything else aside. And you're gonna work off of this first. Now you can butter up your pan for extra precaution. I might just do that. So butter. Now you can melt the butter if you want. I am simply just rubbing it against the pan the spring foam pan, I didn't already specify. <sighs> Just extra precaution. So next you're gonna take your chocolate ice cream and scoop it a layer. You do wanna spread it so that the entire pan is covered. Gonna take the hot fudge and I'm gonna pour it on top. All you need is a, a light layer, it doesn't need to be covered everything, but once it gets uh, cut into it, then each piece can at least enjoy. So as long as you were to bite into each piece here, each side, and there's some here, then you'd be golden, right? Next, ice cream bars. Start putting them along the pan. Don't need to be Martha Stewart in this, don't you worry, because it's the final product. That matters. I put it in the freezer for 30 minutes so that everything can get together. I actually put it on top of a cookie sheet in case anything were to spill out, but nothing has. But it's just a precautionary thing. So now that that's all frozen, we're gonna put another layer of the chocolate ice cream. Love how this has already Oreo chunks embedded into it because I was gonna put, because it just adds the extra goodness to the cookie flavor. <laughs> Spread it out, and I switched from the spatula to a metal spoon. I think it works just a little bit better. And of course, if need to, then you'll have to uh, just add some more. And of course, try to work as fast as you can because ice cream just melts. And do you see how I'm covering up any imperfections? So you don't have to be a Martha Stewart in this. Fudge comes back. So literally you're doing layers and layers of the Dairy Queen Oreo cake is, but I'm adding 
a little extra things into the mix because my husband just loves Oreo cookies. Anything Oreo, he loves it. And the good thing about this fudge is that it's the actual hot fudge that works well, whether it be cold or hot. Happy about that. I'm just not happy how difficult it takes to come out. Again, middle spoon. Trying to work quickly here. Trying is the key word. Trying to get into the spaces where fudge isn't currently already. <laughs> when we bite into this, we can enjoy it. See that? <laughs> I know this is the good stuff from Dairy Queen when you bite into it. Now, get the Oreos and you start crushing them. And as best as you can, no, you don't have to be neat with this, as long as every slice has heat and can savor all the ingredients, then you're good. This is the middle of the cake, so I put this in the middle of the cake. Normally that's where you get the cookie crumbles anyways. And I'm back to the ice cream sandwiches. Literally, this is just an assembly line. And then to top it off, more of the chocolate ice cream. Lastly, which I didn't show at the beginning with the ingredients, but you need your either whipping topping or Cool Whip, which is what I was initially trying to find. Back into the freezer for another 40 minutes, be on the safe side, and then we'll come back and we'll top up the sides, and it's ready to eat. So I've come back and it is frozen completely. I put saran wrap so that it wouldn't cause any uh, film of a layer on top. I'm gonna take that off and then run a butter knife all along the edges so that it helps. Then you take off the spring foam right here. And just as beautiful as that is, it comes right off. Get a bowl. Need to cover up the rest of the sides. And it's just a matter of putting, whoo, spray myself, putting all the whipping topping in, in the supper bowl. Food coloring, I'm using blue because it's my husband's favorite. Mixing it up. Putting it and layering it on the sides. And you can use a spatula, you can use a butter knife, which is what I'm using here. Just try your best to work quickly. It's ice cream cake, and you will see possibly, isn't it here? But the beauty of leaving it in the freezer, freezing up the layers, it really does help. And here you can cover up any imperfections that you may think you had, because we're not all Martha Stewart's, but we definitely can try. entire sides of the cake is covered you put it back into the freezer for 30 minutes then you're ready to go and to serve mm -hmm. 